So you give 10% of your tithes to your pastor and then he has his board members, his financial officer disperse those funds into salaries. Most of them go into salaries, by the way. They pay worship leaders. People, All, all the people on the platform get some money in the bigger churches. I remember when they used to, all those people that were so-called worshipers and choir people were just volunteers from the congregation. And I remember back when you could sing off key and still be accepted. Or bring an instrument. You could bring a trumpet, you could bring a tambourine and shake it. And it was all acceptable and it was, you were encouraged to do that. But now it's all professional. Uh, you sit and you're entertained by these, or you call it being entertained. It's vexing, right? Really, because the people in the congregation are not part of the operation of the Holy Spirit. Neither are the people up on the stage. It's all flesh. But if the people that were there were given the opportunity, uh, assuming they would be, uh, they are Christians, washed in the blood, that if that was the case where they're gathered together, the assembly of the righteous, so to speak, then every member would have some function in the Holy Spirit. Some would have a psalm, others would have a revelation, one would have a tongue, one would have an interpretation, one would have a prophecy, maybe two or three and let the other judge. This would be a very exciting assembly because we would all go to the temple of the Lord with the excitement that God would use us as part of the body as an operation of his hands fitly framed together the Bible says we're fitly framed together all these members are fitly framed together by the Holy Spirit and we grow up together into the full stature of Jesus Christ now that's exciting I'll go to that church <laughs>